On this video, we are going to look at the superposition principle and how to use this principle in order to solve uh, the physics assignments. Uh, so the superposition principle states that the resultant force on any one charge equals the vector sum of the forces exerted by the other individual charges that are present. So this means that our forces are vectors. Here we have a superposition principle example. We have the force exerted by Q1 on Q3 is right here as F13. The force exerted by Q2 on Q3 is right here at F23. And the total force exerted on Q3 is a vector sum of Q13 and um, of uh, F23. Let's look at a few examples of our superposition um, problems. Number one on your assignment, in 1919 um, in Germany a train of eight kites was flown 9,740 meters above the ground. The distance is uh, 892 meters higher than Mount Everest. Consider the arrangement of the charges located at the various heights and shown below. If Q1 is 2.8, Q2 is negative 6.4, and Q3 is 48, find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant electrical forces acting on Q. So this has got it, it drawn out for us, showing us Q1, Q2, Q3. It shows us the distance between R1 and 2, and then it shows the distance between R1 to R3. So we've come over here for our solution, and we've identified um, our three charges from our problem. Uh, we've identified our distance between uh, R1 and 3 and R1 and 2, and remember that this is Combs constant. We're going to be looking at this equation right here in order to solve the problem. Now the first thing we're going to have to do is we have to solve for um, F12. Now to solve F12, we're going to take Combs constant, we're going to multiply that times our Q1 charge, our Q2 charge, and then we're going to have our distance right here. Okay, remember that our distance is squared. We're going to work that out, and then we're going to get our answer. We are going to have to do the same thing for our F13 distance. So we have our... Um, Combs constant, Q1 charge, we have our Q3 charge, we have uh, our distance squared, work it out, we have this right here. Now, for our total, we'll have to take our F12 plus our F13, and um, what we're looking at here is our F12 plus our F13, we get our answer. Now, if you remember on that right there, this right here is negative because this right here is a, a negative charge. So we take that negative plus this, we get our answer, and so our, our F1 total for this right here, the magnitude, would be 0.189 north down. I'm sorry, newtons down. Here we have example three. And um, it says that we have uh, 248 millimeters long, 70 millimeters wide, uh, equal charge of one uh, nat and combs are placed in the corners of the stamp. Find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant electrical forces acting on the upper right corner, assuming the widest part of the stamp is aligned with the x-axis. All right, so we're going through here. We've got our width and our length, and we've got our charge, and we've got Combs constant, and we have drawn out our square stamp right here. And from our stamp, we have put down that it was, um, I had to change from millimeters over to meters. I've got, um, again, my millimeters changed over to meters, and I've got that down. So as we're looking at this right here, I ended up having to solve for um, 
the force on the x-axis and the force on the y-axis. So this right here is the formula that I will be using for my force on the x-axis. Combs constant, charge, here I've got my length squared, my length over my width, um, length squared, width squared, and then um, 3 over 2 for this right here. That's the equation. Plug in, solve, I get my answer. Now, again, I'm going to have to use this equation right here for my y. And I do have all of these components, so I'm going to plug all those in. You're just going to notice that my difference is dealing with my y-axis, the location of my w's and my l's have changed uh, because of my length and width and how they relate to my x and y-axis. Plug in and I solve. Okay, now I can use the Pythagorean theorem and say that my net force is the square root of my um, x4 squared plus my uh, y4 squared. And so I can get my net force. Now, going back, I have to also do the inverse tangent of Fy over Fx in order to get my degrees. So this is the example um, number five in our homework. And I'll let you um, do the reading up here. Uh, but you can read through the problem. Once you've read through the problem, we've identified our components. We've identified our distance uh, from the problem up there. Um, notice that we had to take the um, kilometers, and I did have to convert that to meters. I've got my charges down here, and then I've got my constant. Now, we will be dealing with an x and a y axis. So the first thing I need to do is come up with my change in x. My change in x is going to be... And I did not draw that one in here, but, um, you know, we've got that distance of um, 1.2 times 10 to the third meters as my uh, diameter. And that would be right where I drew that line. So anyway, to get my uh, change in X, I would take that distance divided by the square root of 2. And then um, I get my change for X. Now, in order to find my um, force of x, what I'm going to have to do is come over and plug into my equation. That's this equation right there. So, I'm just plugging in the numbers that I've got. Uh, I've got my uh, Combs constant. Uh, I've got my charges I need to plug in. Uh, cosine, uh, because of, of the location. Uh, this right here was for my uh, change in x. I have my distance, so I'm able to put that in. If I didn't have distance, then I could sub this right here in. Plug in, do the math, and then I get my fx. Now, I've also got to do the same thing for, for solving for my y. Coming over using the same equations, but I'm having to put in for my change in y. So, I do need to go ahead, and my change in y will equal the change in x. So, that's going to stay the same there. Plug in uh, my Combs constant. My charges, this time uh, we're on sine. Again, it's because of the locations that we're looking at. Uh, my fx would be my uh, negative f2 plus uh, f3 cosine theta. My uh, fy would be uh, negative uh, f4 minus f3 sine theta. But uh, plug that in. I solve. I get my fy. I'm then going to do the Pythagorean theorem like we did before. I can solve for my net force, and then I come over and I can do my inverse tangent of Fy over Fx. I can get my degrees so that I know that I have one Newton that is 77 degrees below the negative x-axis.